and welcome to Revive Life, the show where we talk about uh, health, wellness, and balance with our expert guests. Today we have a fabulous show that every woman should be watching, and we're going to be talking about breast health. Because at this point, one in eight women will be diagnosed with breast cancer. Every 30 seconds a woman is diagnosed, and up to uh, 12, every 12 minutes a woman actually dies from having breast cancer. Early detection is one of our most important key tools. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna help you understand a little bit about early detection. The first thing we wanna look at is breast self exams. And we wanna make sure that we're doing them on a monthly basis at the end of our cycle, as well as seeing your family practitioner on an annual basis. Secondarily, we also want to think about hormone testing because if your body is in an estrogen dominant state, there is an increased risk of developing cancer and we have the technology to be able to do uh, hormone ratios. So that would be step two. Step number three, you want to make sure that you consider uh, progressive techniques such as medical thermography, which we're going to be talking about later on in the show, because no one technique is adequate to uh, confirm the diagnosis of breast cancer. As a matter of fact, mammograms are excellent at early detection in terms of uh, the impact on mortality, but they are not, uh, in terms of mammogram detection themselves, it, they're only 16 to 40% effective uh, with that one technique. So you also want to combine it with an ultrasound, and then the gold standard would be an MRI, which is 70 to 90% effective. But if we use a combined effort with all of these parameters, we'll get great results. So today uh, is a show that's dedicated to all the men and women and families who've gone through this uh, process and actually to a friend, Lori Gunther. So Lori, I hope you're watching today. And this is a little bit about how we can help our friends, sisters, mothers uh, work preventatively. So our quiz today, uh, you can get out your pencils and we're going to be uh, talking about, and we actually have a prize for the first caller in, we've got a wonderful gift certificate to Bra Chic, which we've got lovely products here. So make sure you call us at 613-728-1001. So our quiz today is question number one, what are the signs of breast cancer? Question number two, can estrogen dominance increase my risk of breast conditions, including cancer? Question three, far infrared sauna treatment may reduce my risk of breast conditions. Number four, is breast self-examination effective in early detection? And number five, what about drinking alcohol? Does it increase my chance of getting breast cancer? So these are the questions that we're going to answer today. If you happen to miss anything, uh, please visit my blog at www.revivelifeclinic.com and you can find out the top 10 foods to prevent breast cancer as well as the top 10 tips, which we're going to be running through some of them in today's show. So now what we have is we have an educational video to show every woman how to do a breast self-exam. So please pay attention and make sure that you do this on a monthly basis at the end of your cycle. Far too often, breast cancer is detected after it has spread and affected other parts of the body. Regular breast self-examination is an important step to early detection. The female breast is primarily composed of fatty tissue and mammary glands. Mammary glands drain into the lactiferous sinus, which connects them to the nipple. During pregnancy, mammary glands swell in order to accommodate milk production. The mammary gland is also the place where most breast cancers begin. Breast self-examination, or BSE, should be done at the same time each month, right after your menstrual cycle has ended. The first step in BSE is visual inspection. Stand in front of a mirror with your hands on your hips. Look at your breasts, paying special attention to any skin changes, redness, swelling, puckering, as well as to any nipple changes, indentation, scaling, discharge. Now raise your hands over your head and check again for any change in appearance or contour. There are three common methods for the next step in BSE. They are all effective but you can try each of them to see which one works best for you. Regardless of the method you choose, the objective of this step is to feel or palpate the entire breast area in both the upright and reclining position and to notice any changes that occur in the breast from month to month. 
on palpation, the breast should be soft and smooth when you push on it, like an extra firm bed pillow. The line method for palpating the breast involves using the soft pad of your three middle fingers to move in a vertical line, starting in the underarm area and moving down below the breast. Move over a little and slowly move back up. Repeat this up and down motion until the entire breast and underarm area has been examined. The circle method involves moving your three middle fingers in a circular motion, starting at the outer edge of the breast and working your way in slowly toward the nipple. Be sure to check the underarm area and the upper chest area as well. The last method involves feeling or palpating the breast in wedges. Use your three middle fingers and beginning at the outer edge of the breast, move in toward the nipple. Go back to the outer edge and check the next wedge of the breast. Repeat this procedure until the entire breast is palpated. Once again, check the underarm and upper chest areas. If you notice any changes or discover a lump or knot that feels like a small hard pebble, you should contact your doctor as soon as possible. Keep in mind that BSE should be used in conjunction with clinical breast examinations by a doctor and also with mammography according to your doctor's recommendation. Great. So we're back here now with Marianne Hassan. Thank you so much for joining us today. Well, thank you for and asking. she's from brashik.ca. Uh, mm -hmm. And today we have these lovely, lovely <laughs> samples of various bras. And you're going to help us work through these. So can you tell us um, why is it important for a woman to have a properly fitting bra? Um, it's important for uh, women to get measured uh, yes. for a, a good bra because uh, lots of women get it wrong. Uh, so a lot of women will get a bra that's both too big and too small, okay. uh, too, big in, uh, too big in the band and too small in the cup. Yes. Uh, if it's an underwired bra and the cup is too small, then the wire itself is going to be on the breast tissue and you want to avoid the breast tissue when okay. it comes to underwire. Yes, that's right because I was on your website and I found it very interesting that if you don't have a properly fitting bra, you might even develop a cyst. Can you help our viewers understand that? Absolutely. So the, this, this is wire. Um, so if your breast is larger than the cup of the bra, yes. the wire sits on the breast tissue and from movement during the day it rubs. So this okay. wire is actually rubbing on the breast tissue. So it's Okay, so the with friction the body the forms friction. a cushion yeah. and tries to protect itself and forms Absolutely. a cyst. So that's very important. So how, uh, as, as women, how do we know if a bra does not fit us properly? Oh, if you can hand me this one I can yes, show you. Yes, yes. Um, so, when you are looking at how your bra should fit, okay. um, the underwire should be directly up against the chest. Okay. The underwire then totally encases the breast tissue, so the underwire is outside of the breast tissue. I always think of it as a picture in a frame. So, the breast is the picture and the underwire is the frame. It totally encases the breast. Okay. So, if a woman was to raise her arms up above her head, there, there would be no breast tissue hanging out and there'd be no breast, breast tissue, you know, that four breasted That's look. That's a common thing yes, that we so see. so it needs to be inside. <laughs> and also that a lot of women are always surprised that the band of the bra is so low. So your band of the bra is horizontal. So okay. the front should be as low as the back. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Okay, a lot yeah. of women don't know that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so how often should you be fitted for a bra? Because we change. We ch our, our body Absolutely. shapes change, our weight changes. Absolutely, it varies. Um, so, I mean, the industry would say every six months. I think a year is good, um, unless there's weight change, um, pregnancy, uh, any, any body change and exactly. you know that you've changed, then it's time to get refitted. Okay, so that brings up an interesting topic mm -hmm. is pregnancy. I mean, yeah. this one's beautiful. Yeah. We yeah. didn't have they really this. Are. They really are beautiful. Yeah. So can you tell us about the uh, pregnancy options? Yes, the, 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 what we carry in our store, I mean, we have the plain nudes and the whites, um, but we also have this beautiful line uh, called Hot Milk. Um, and it offers the